Welcome back to part five of this introductory series on learning blueprints, where we will now begin to use these scale parameters in order to change our mesh. A quick recap of what we've done so far is we've learned how to add components into the blueprint interface and see them inside of the viewport. We've gotten to understand how we can initialize and set up variables and store their information to be used later on. We've learned about using trigger volumes as well as timelines and have gone on to create two different sets of changes on our mesh, one changing the location over time and the other one changing the rotation over time. We learned about the linear interpolate node with a vector as well as the lerp rotator and why we have to use combined rotators for our rotational addition instead of just uh, vector addition. The final component is the scale. I'm going to twirl up the rotation and twirl down the scale. We're going to grab our initial scale holding control and let go. I'm going to grab the scale x scale with control and let go y holding control z holding control and now we have all of the variables that we'll be using. Now, the thing about the scale is it is also a vector, very similar to our location. We can actually copy this entire set here, control C, control V, and the thing we're gonna do is I'm gonna hold control on this pin here, and that lets me change where that's going. If I was to hold Alt, it disconnects them but I want to hold control and I can change from one node to the next. I'm going to hold control instead of X position, X scale holding control, Y scale holding control, Z scale. I'm going to select the location, X, Y, Z, delete. And then I'm going to bring these over here and tidy this up so it's nice and organized. Highlighting all this, hitting C, and renaming that to scale changes, going to the color, turning the alpha off. And the last step here is grabbing our alpha from our timeline node, dragging it into our linear interpolate load, add a reroute node, move this over, I'm going to grab these, just slide them down out of the way a little bit. And then finally, I'll take our return value off of the lerp, which gives us a vector, and plug that into the new transform scale. Now you'll see we have completed the blueprint. We've initialized our variables, position, scale, and rotation. We've set up our trigger volume trigger sphere, we've set up our timeline, we're animating with this alpha curve from 0 to 1 over 1 second, we've got our location changes with our variables, our rotation changes with our roll pitch yaw, and now finally our scale changes. I'm going to hit compile, save, minimize this. I'm going to select these three, holding Alt, and I'm going to drag them back 1,000 units. Make sure they're all reset, they're all at zero. Now, starting with the X scale, because we want to make sure it's visible, let's change this to something like 20. With the Y, change this to 5. And with the Z, change this to minus 1.001 1 .001. and I will explain why we did that in a moment. I'm going to hit Alt P, jump in and start to check out the scale changes. I'm going to come in on the side because the first one we're changing on the X scale. And you can see that has thickened up 20 times its original size. Now we're moving on to the Y scale 
and the Zed. And this is almost like a door is vanishing into nothing. And the reason why we used minus 1.001, we could even add more zeros here. Okay, now I'm going to actually copy this holding Alt, turn off snapping, copy this holding Alt. I'm going to set this one to actually just minus one. So the one on the left is minus 1.001, .001, and the one on the right is just minus one. And the reason we are getting this flickering here is what's called Z-fighting, or uh, it can happen on any axis, actually. But what's going on is the computer has a mesh, in the ex two meshes in the exact same plane, and it is not sure which one to show you. So what it's doing is it's trying to show you them both. It's trying to show the floor and the top of the door at the same time, and it's getting very confused. So if you ever see this happening, you just need to nudge, you know, 0 0.001, and you will be able to eliminate that. In the final video, we will go over some limitations to this blueprint, as well as explore how you could possibly use this within a game. Thanks for watching. Bye now.